the Tudor Black Bay 58925. It is one of the best watches that I've personally had hands-on time with in the last year, or perhaps even longer. And look, I'm not going to mince words here. I do love it. And that surprised me. I wasn't expecting to be as impressed with this watch as I am. Now, in part, this is my first time with a Black Bay 58, which I've always been interested in, but now I can say unequivocally that I am a huge fan. On top of that, this new 925 Sterling Silver model really, really impressed me. So if you're looking for the short version of this review, there you go. I think it's awesome. You should probably go ahead and buy it. I don't think you'll regret it. Now, I do have to say thanks to John, a viewer of the channel, who loaned me his watch for this video. He's only had it for about a month, but he was kind enough to part with it for a few days and let me check it out. So thank you, John. I do really appreciate it. Now, if you want one, and you don't have a friend willing to give you theirs, give our video sponsor, David SW, a call. I'm sure they can help you find one. I've personally done business with David SW, and I asked them to be a sponsor on my channel because they are a reliable and trusted dealer of brands like Tudor, Rolex, AP, Patek, and several other great luxury watch brands. So if you're looking for a new watch, check out their website, davidsw.com, or give them a call and speak with a member of the David SW team at their retail location in Orlando, Florida. I really can't recommend them enough. So the Tudor Black Bay 58 925 is not unlike any other Black Bay 58, with one obvious exception. The watch case is constructed from beautiful 925 sterling silver, and it's finished in an excellent satin brushed finish. Now, as I had mentioned in the past, when they announced this watch release, the idea of a watch made from silver was both A, really appealing, and B, a little bit scary. Appealing in so much as I am actually a big fan of silver in general. See, my wedding band is 925 sterling silver. I've collected silver coins over the years, and I just like the metal. But it is a little scary because silver is a soft metal that gets scratched and dinged much more easily than stainless steel. And of course, it can tarnish. And while I can't say for sure if my concerns will be realized with this watch, because obviously I'd need to spend months or even years with the watch to see how it holds up over time, what I can say is that in terms of my excitement for a watch made from silver, I was not disappointed. This watch looks stunning. They did almost everything right with this one. So I say almost everything because I do have two small complaints. And usually I'll save the pros and cons segment until the end of the video, but let's get my complaints out of the way right now because they are so few and so minor. First, I'll say this. I have never been a fan of the snowflake hands found on Tudor watches. However, I could totally overlook that subjective complaint for this watch. That's how much I like it. The deal killer for me might be that it doesn't come on a bracelet. And look, the leather strap, it is top shelf. It's really nice. But for me, a diver kind of just needs to be on a bracelet. And I wish that it had that option. However, it's not a small chance that at some point in the future I pick up this watch despite that, or maybe a stainless steel 58 on a bracelet because this line of watches has so much going for it. Another thing that I need to point out is that this video does not do the watch justice. I honestly had a really hard time capturing what the watch looks like in person. The silver case is a brilliant bright metal and the bezel and the dial can look dark gray to almost black depending on ambient lighting conditions. So I would say this, at least for me, in person, the bezel in the dial tends to look black most of the time, but in reviewing the video footage, I can see that it presents much lighter, sort of a shade of gray. So what I would recommend is that you look at this watch in person and don't judge the way that it presents off of my video or anyone else's videos or pictures for that matter, because in person it looks fabulous. There is one other difference aside from the silver case between this and the standard Black Bay 58, and that is the movement. This watch uses the MT5400, and the stainless steel version of the 58 uses the MT5402. Now, my understanding is that both movements are basically the same COSC certified in-house caliber, but the one in this watch had a minor dimension change in order to better fit the case with a display case back. 
Aside from that, I think we have basically the same specs. A 70-hour power reserve with a frequency of 28,800 vibrations per hour. And the decoration, while it is sparse to say the least, the watch movement is solid. It's accurate and it is high quality. And for me, that's really what matters most. The watch case is, as previously mentioned, 925 sterling silver. However, Tudor reports that it's a new blend of silver which should hold up better over time relative to how silver tends to tarnish as it ages. The theory is that they've mixed silver with aluminum instead of the more traditional nickel or copper. But I don't think Tudor has made this information public, so I can't say for sure if that's completely accurate or not. What I can say is that there have been some reports in other reviews that the silver case has already tarnished, but at least in my example here, I've not seen any signs of that happening. That said, I've also never seen any of my silver coins or my silver wedding ring tarnish, so I'm honestly not overly concerned about that happening to this watch. In terms of specification, the watch case is 39 millimeters in diameter and only 12 millimeters thick. It's 20 millimeters wide between the lugs, and it has a wingspan of about 47.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. I reviewed the standard Black Bay in the past, and I had some real issues with the size of that watch. It was just a little bit too large for my tastes, but this one, on the other hand, the size is perfect. Literally perfect. At least for me, anyway, and I wouldn't change a single thing. The watch's unidirectional elapsed time bezel has a lovely coin edge texture, and the 60-minute graduated bezel insert has a loom pip at the zero marker. The bezel is a 60-click action, and the action is what I would describe as slightly on the stiff side, but it's smooth and it is reassuring, and overall exceptionally well done. The Tudor rose-signed crown is screw down, and the action is silky smooth. It's just perfect. The edge texture on the crown and the overall size of it makes the manipulation of the crown feel every bit as good as the big brother Rolex Mariner in this regard. And thanks to that screw down crown, along with a number of other factors, the watch case is ensured to have 200 meters of waterproofness. And Tudor does market the watch as waterproof, not just resistant, so it should be safe for any and all water sports with a strap change, of course. Now, speaking of the strap, the leather strap is, as I said before, top shelf. It's as nice as any aftermarket strap that I've had my hands on. But straps in general are not my favorite method for wearing a watch. I am, by and large, a bracelet guy, and I do wish that this had a bracelet option. But that being said, the chocolate brown leather strap, it's well done, and it starts with a very nice silver Tudor-signed pin buckle, that nicely matches the finish of the 925 silver case. The leather itself is comfortable enough on the wrist, and I really can't complain too much about it, despite the fact that I would prefer a bracelet. And at 20 millimeters in width between the lugs, you are just a quick strap change to rubber, and you'd have a great water companion on your wrist. That said, how is it on the wrist? Well, in a word, it's perfect. My wrist is six and three quarter inches and it fits as well as any diver I've ever tried on. And that's one of the reasons that I like this watch so much. It's really hard to find divers, which tend to be on the larger side, that wear well on wrists under seven inches. But this one is a home run. That's probably more to do with the 58 model in general than this specific 925 Silver Edition, obviously. But yeah, it does wear really well on the wrist for me, and I am now a huge fan of the whole line of watches. The watch crystal is a domed sapphire crystal, and yeah, it does stand proud of the bezel. So be careful with your wrists and where you're swinging your arms as you're walking past things like doors and, of course, near walls. Because like any vintage-inspired dome crystal, it's not hard to smack it on something if you're being careless. Now those risks notwithstanding, the crystal looks great. It doesn't give you that lens distortion at the edge as much as something like the domed Hesalite crystal on an Omega Speedmaster, but it's still a really smart looking presentation and very fitting for the rest of the style of the watch. The case is completely finished in a satin brushed finish. Even the chamfered edge of the case, 
And I might have liked to see those edges polished to give it a little hint of flash, but perhaps being such a bright, shiny metal, that would have been a bit too much. I do like the finishing though, as it is, and perhaps this type of finishing will work better for hiding any small scratches or nicks that you get in the metal that we're sure to pick up on our watches over time. The dial markers and hands are presumably in silver as well, but I guess they could be stainless steel, I'm not 100% sure. I didn't see any indication on the Tudor website to clarify that. But regardless, they both look great and the finishing is excellent. The Tudor branding and the logo on the dial is all printed with no appliques outside of the hour markers, which includes a triangle at 12 with sticks at 369 and circle dots everywhere else. It's a classic dive watch aesthetic, but on this dark gray dial, it's absent of the traditional black bay gold gilt printing, and I think that looks great. The hands, the hour markers, and the zero marker pip on the bezel are all loomed with green superluminova which, as expected, is bright when you hit it with a full charge and it quickly fades to a nice ambient glow, which is both long-lasting and legible in low light and dark situations. Speaking of the hands, the Snowflake handset is iconic for the Tudor brand, and while it's always been a point of contention for me, I do have to admit that they've grown on me. I do feel like the hour hand square accent is just a bit too big and overwhelming, but with everything else on the watch, including the overall size and scale being so on the money and how well it wears on the wrist, I could let that go, that personal hang-up of mine, and I'd be happy to own and wear a Black Bay 58. So what are my final thoughts on the Black Bay 58 in general, and this silver 925 model specifically? Well, like I said in the beginning, I'm a huge fan of this watch and now the whole line of Black Bay 58 watches in general. And if you want my recommendation... Just go buy it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's actually now on my shortlist, along with the Rolex Explorer and 36mm, as one of just a handful of watches that I'd really like to add to my collection sometime in the future. Alright guys, that'll wrap this one up for today. As always, thanks for tuning in and watching the show, and of course, thanks to John for loaning me his watch for this review. I really appreciate it. Now, also don't forget to check out our channel sponsor, davidsw.com, if you're looking for a new watch, whether it's a Tudor or anything else that they carry, and of course let them know that you heard about their store from Guy and the Just Blue Fish channel if you end up giving them a call and buying a watch. Now, with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up for today and say bye now.